Same for us. So that in Him, we might become the righteousness of God. Christ, the Lamb of God, offered His life as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. And for you. God our Father punished His Son for your sins. Your transgressions have been atoned for. And your guilt has been removed. You are at peace with God and at one with the Lord. You have been saved by the blood of the Lord. You are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you redeem the world and me. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. God most holy, look with mercy on us, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, be given over into the hands of the wicked, and suffer death upon the cross. Keep us always faithful to him, our only Savior, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 We turn our attention to the reading of the Word of our God. Our first lesson this evening comes from the book of Isaiah chapters 52 and 53. See the sacrifice that God gave for us in Jesus. A lesson from Isaiah chapters 52 and 53. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being, and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of, because of him. For what they were not told, they will see. And what they have not heard, they will understand. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar and pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet, who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. 
And after he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressions. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The choir will sing how deep the Father's love for us. Sinners, exalted above the heavens. 
Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law points as high priests men in all their weakness, but the oath, which came after the law, appointed the Son, who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God. Hear the verse of the day. By one sacrifice, God has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Now we hear the gospel of the crucifixion of our Lord from John chapter 19. Hear the good news about Jesus. The gospel of the crucifixion of our Lord. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There, they crucified him. And with him, two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So, this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Gospel of the Crucifixion of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We join together in singing the hymn of the day, hymn number 140. <laughs> Thank you. 
To rethink sacrifice. To see what God is asking of us. And to understand what God has done for us. And that man, a middle cross. And tonight, as we think about our Savior, I'd like you to stop for a moment and to think about the other two people on those crosses. They made sacrifices to get themselves there. We don't know too much about who those people are. The Gospel of Luke tells us that they were thieves. But they made some pretty significant sacrifices to end up on crosses. They'd given up their righteousness. They'd given up their holiness. They'd given up their innocence. They'd given up their purity. And they'd done something so heinous for thieves such treacherous criminals that they deserved to be killed. Well, we don't know too many details. The early Christian church has told us that their names might have been Gestus and Clais, a word that means deceit and sunset, an ending of life. 
But these are the characters that we find nailed to two crosses on either side of the man in the middle. Men who had given up their lives in search of something better in their own eyes. And they ended up dying next to the man in the middle. It's John who turns our attention from those criminals to that man in the middle. There was a sign plastered over his head that said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Which shows in just some small way what that guy gave up to end up at that cross. He was the true king of Israel. He had done amazing miracles. He had healed the sick. He had caused the lame to walk. The blind to see. The dead to rise. He had been Israel's greatest helper. And yet because he turned the apple cart upside down and took power away from the authorities and directed people toward God for salvation, there he was, the king of the Jews, on a cross in between two criminals, sentenced to death for being God. It's the man in the middle that really makes Good Friday what it is for us today. We have nothing to commemorate, nothing to celebrate if it weren't for that one man fastened to two pieces of wood with Roman spikes. He's there because of the sacrifice that needed to be made. Because just like those criminals on the cross next to Jesus were just as worthy of iron spikes through our hands and feet. Maybe not because we're such prolific thieves we deserve to be arrested and sentenced to death in the United States of America. But every single one of our crimes against heaven teaches us what we deserve. It was the Lord himself who said in the book of Ezekiel, the soul who sins is the one who will die. What sacrifices have we made to pursue sin? We've given up on holiness. We've left righteousness behind. We've pursued paths of wickedness instead of following God's Righteousness. Those are the sacrifices that we've made. The Bible says again, the wages of sin is death. What we deserve for the sacrifices that we've made is to die a miserable death. To be sentenced to hell for eternity. But it's time for us tonight to rethink all of our wickedness, all of our evil deeds, every single one of our sins, and to look clearly at the cross. Because it's there. We see God's eternal plan for us. He knew that none of us, no matter how hard we try to live a holy and righteous life, could ever attain what God commands. But there was one who could. It's the man in the middle. It was Jesus who always obeyed every single command from God. It was Jesus when the crowds were crying out to him, if you really are the Christ, come down from that cross. You stay there. Because of you. He was willing to sacrifice his life 
so that you would have the complete assurance of a home in heaven at God's side. That was the sacrifice our God was willing to make for you. The 33 years that Jesus spent walking this earth in righteousness and purity can hardly compare with the eternity that he's promised for all who put their faith and hope and trust in him. He needed criminals on a cross to know that he paid the full debt for their crimes that had them right next to him on either side. And he's the criminals in this room here tonight to hear his words echoing out over the ages. It is finished. There's nothing left for you or for me to pay. No other sacrifice is needed than the one that the man on the middle cross made. Your salvation is paid in full. So we don't need to give up coffee. We don't need to give up chocolate. We don't need to do one more thing to try and pledge our lives to be right with God. On this Good Friday, let's look to the cross and see the sacrifice Jesus made. And hear him say to our souls, my son, my daughter, it's finished. It's all done. Everything is paid. You are at peace with God. When we've understood that, we truly understand what religion is really about. That's not about what we would ever give to God, what kind of offering that we would present before Him, but it's all about what God has given to us. Everything that He offered to you in Jesus. Real religion is recognizing our sinfulness and God's faithfulness that he showed us in his son on the middle cross. Real religion is truly believing that when Jesus said, it's finished, he's talking to you here tonight. Real religion is understanding God's grace that it's yours all of heaven's forgiveness is yours you're completely set free you're a child of paradise all and only and ever because of Jesus that perfect sacrifice for our sins. So let's rethink religion together tonight. Let's rethink any sacrifice we would ever make and see what God has put on display for us on the cross and come to that man in the middle and find the heart of our faith in Jesus, the Lamb of God, who took away the sins of the world, and your sins as well. Amen. May the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's join together in singing our next sin is hymn number 140.
us pray for the whole Christian church that our Lord God would defend her against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary and keep her perpetually on the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ and in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy so that your church, spread throughout all the nations, may be defended against the adversary and may serve you in true faith and persevere in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all the ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church, that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error. Call them to faith in the true and living God and his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and gather them into his family, the church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death but the life of all, hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you. Free them from their error. And for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord God Almighty that he would deliver the world from all error, take away disease, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, and grant health to the sick and a safe journey to all who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you, so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for peace that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as is fitting for Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all conquer, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and conquer that we may serve you in true fear to the praise and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 <coughs> Finally, let us pray for all those things which our Lord would have us ask as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let's join together and sing our closing hymn this evening. Hymn number 125. One note, you will not be ushered out. You're welcome to stay and meditate as long as you would like. The Lord bless and keep you tonight and always.